My husband, Tyson, called. Just three minutes before my father's funeral started. I have been wondering where he was for a little while. What on earth was he up to? I won't be attending, so take care of things. Did I hear that correctly? How can he say this just three minutes before? I just think that it's a waste of time to be there only to pay respect. Well then, good luck! My husband abruptly hung up the phone. My father had adored Tyson, like his own son. Does it mean that there's no use for the deceased? As for Tyson, there had been too many things that he had done before this, and I no longer had the energy to get angry. Still, this is unacceptable. Dad, we were not good judges of character. I spoke to my father's photograph. My father in the picture was smiling. If my father were here right now, he would surely say, forgive him. But, I'm not going to let it slide. Even if you forgive him, Dad, I won't. It's not just a matter for our family anymore. My father ran a small factory in town. They primarily make specialized industrial papers, using a very unique skill in his factory. The papers are called separator, and they were used in lithium-ion batteries and other applications. It is a niche industry, but our products hold a significant market share. The company was founded by my maternal grandfather, and my father joined as an employee. Recognizing his hard work, he was welcomed as the son-in-law to the family, and by the end of that year, I was born. My mother was weak, and her life was in danger, when she gave birth to me. So, after that, my mother refrained from getting pregnant. As an only child, I was raised with great care. Unaware of these circumstances, I used to pester my mother sometimes, that I wanted siblings. Yes, I'd like to give you siblings, too. My mother would say, with a slightly sad smile. My mother had weak kidneys, and she started receiving dialysis in her 20s. In her case, dialysis was performed about twice a week. Dialysis replaces the kidneys in filtering the waste products that the blood has collected from the body. They take blood out of the body, clean it, and then return it to the body, but the step of temporarily removing the blood from the body for filtration is more physically taxing than one might imagine. On the day she received dialysis, my mother would usually be exhausted, and on the second and third days, she would regain her strength. Then, the following day, she had to receive dialysis again. As I watched my mother, my heart ached when I was a child. My mother passed away when I was in the fifth grade. It's said that the lifespan of people receiving dialysis is shorter than those who don't, but I wished she could have lived, at least until I turned 20. My father was apparently a diligent student in high school. I had that he was in a football club. According to his lifelong best friend, with whom I still keep in touch, my father was strong and even earned the respect of some gang groups. By the way, this close friend of my father's, despite his intimidating appearance, is actually a police officer. I'm sure that he was a bad boy when he was in school. My father was a person who valued gratitude and he would always say, people have to know what gratitude is. Without gratitude, you're just an animal. As if it was his habit. Though deep down, I couldn't help but think, people say that if a dog is fed for three days, it will never forget the favor. I was influenced by my father, and I have lived my life, trying not to become an ungrateful person. I believe, my father and mother truly loved each other. Or rather, my father was head over heels with my mother. There's no doubt about that. After all, my father never remarried, and raised me all on his own. As for the factory, Thanks to dependable employees, business was steadily growing. Especially, Angelica, the female employee, in accounting, was an indispensable presence. I aspire to 
become like Angelica one day, and help my father, with his work. After graduating from high school, I joined a medium-sized company in the same industry. I worked there for five years, learning the ropes, with the intention of eventually, helping the family business. One evening, my father brought, one of his employees home. The employee was Tyson. It's not often that, someone is invited into our home. He seemed very cheerful, and kind. Apparently, he had just joined the company a month ago. Tyson grew up, in a children's home. His parents left him in a children's home, and disappeared, when he was young. During his middle and high school years, Tyson was what you might call a bad boy, doing bad things, and caused trouble for those around him. Realizing he needed a change, he applied to various companies, after he graduated from high school, but he was rejected everywhere, except for my father's company. He works, really hard, always thinks ahead, and he is really reliable. My father told me happily. Tyson blushed, and said, I won't forget the president's kindness, for hiring someone like me. I'll do my best to prove that, you made the right choice. My father saw Tyson, as a person, and I liked my father for that. Seeing my father's joy, I had a favorable impression of Tyson, who made him so happy. After that, my father frequently, brought Tyson home. I gradually found myself drawn to, his serious and honest personality. It seemed my father already considered him a potential son-in-law. If that's how my father feels, then Tyson is the right person for me. Soon, we started dating and got married in no time at all. After we got married, Tyson came to live with us, so we started our life with the three of us. My father started entrusting him with his work and it seemed he was spending more time at home than before. Tyson learns so quickly, and he's a real lifesaver, my father would say. Dad, you used to be so busy, with hardly any days off. This is great! I replied. My father and Tyson often went out together, and my father cherished him like a real son. When we had meals or watched TV together, there was always laughter in our home. My father seemed delighted to have a reliable successor. The presence of a promising successor is crucial in the business world, as it directly impacts management. Especially in small companies, even the treatment received from banks, for loans for equipment investments, can change. Recently, even the bank representatives who visit us, seem to have become friendlier. I wished every day for this happy life, to continue. I thought everything was going smoothly, until that fateful day of the accident. It was a winter day, about a year after Tyson and I got married. I received a call informing me that the car which my father was riding was involved in an accident, while he was working and had been taken to the hospital. Fortunately, Tyson, who was driving, only suffered minor injuries. I rushed to the hospital, and when I entered the room, the doctor and Tyson were there. My father had suffered a severe head injury, and he was in critical condition, unconscious. The doctor said, that the chances that my father was going to make it were slim. Dad! I called out loudly to him, and his eyelids twitched slightly. Dad! I'm here! I'm by your side! Sorry! Even though I was with him, Tyson's face turned pale, and he looked like he was about to cry. You're not to blame for any of this. Don't blame yourself, I reassured him. Accidents happen to anyone during work. It shouldn't happen, but this has already happened. Let's think about what is the best we can do now. Yes, my father is still alive and fighting. He's doing his best. If he's putting in effort, we can't afford to break down. It's too early to cry. Starting the next day, 
Tyson had to take on my father's responsibilities at the factory, managing operations, processes, and settlements. It looked tough, especially with disagreements, with veteran employees, and there were conflicts sometimes, between him and Angelica, the accountant. I couldn't stand to see him like that, and I asked, Can I help out at the factory? Thank you, but I'll be fine, Tyson replied. I was immensely grateful for Tyson's dedication to taking my father's place. I'll work even harder because it's the factory that your father worked so hard to keep going. I believed in him when he said that. However, a few days later, I heard something unbelievable. Angelica, the accountant, had resigned. Why? I confronted Tyson. They don't listen to me at all. The worst is Angelica. It seems like she's hiding something. There are some shady aspects to the accounting. When the time comes, I'll tell you. It was hard to believe. Angelica wasn't that kind of person. It is no exaggeration to say that we have been able to keep operating the factory thanks to her. But people can change, or maybe not. Something was off. I think I should help at the factory too. I have a good rapport with the older employees, I suggested. You just need to take care of things at home. Don't worry about the factory, Tyson retorted. But I'm concerned about Angelica. Who's more important to you, that employee or me? I was taken aback because Tyson raged suddenly. After that, Tyson kept shouting and couldn't discuss anything at all. He adamantly disliked me, getting involved with company matters. The next morning, I went to wake up Tyson as usual, but he was already gone. Maybe he left for work early. I thought. So, I started doing household chores like cleaning and laundry. But then, I received a call from one of the employees. He said that Tyson hasn't shown up for work. Tyson told us that the delivery date for the company of which Tyson is in charge was five days from now, but we just found out that it's actually tomorrow. The office is in chaos now. I tried calling Tyson's phone, but there was no answer, and he hasn't read my text either. I checked Tyson's room again, and his suitcase was missing. I felt uneasy, and I checked the place where we kept our valuables, only to find out that Tyson's bank book, and the one my father had been saving for emergencies, were gone. I rushed to the company. Along the way, I called Angelica for advice. I'm sorry for this sudden request, but could you contact the client and apologize? Let's say that Tyson had a family emergency back home. Don't worry, I'll head over there right away. Okay, thank you. Thanks to Angelica, we managed to persuade the client to wait for two more days and we saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I took this as an opportunity to start helping out with the company's business. I also wanted to understand more about Tyson. First, I received a briefing from Angelica. I learned that everyone at the company respected my father. However, nobody trusted Tyson. It seemed his attitude was different in front of me and my father compared to how he acted with the other employees. While we were taking a break in the lounge, after checking the books, a veteran employee I knew well came in saying, good job, and sat down next to me. He started talking about my father while drinking a cup of coffee. The president worked with the employees with anything from morning cleaning to miscellaneous tasks, sales, and even light work. As a joke, we once told him, Mr. Martin, if you work too much, there won't be any work left for us. He replied, if I work, it'll save on labor costs. I enjoy using the money I saved to increase everyone's salaries. I believe he worked with that mindset genuinely. I thought that's so like him. When I asked about Tyson, his face immediately clouded over. 
Sorry, but he's no good. He only works hard in front of the president, and he doesn't do anything when the president is not around. His attitude is arrogant, so arguments often break out. When that happens, he intimidates and threatens people. Since he married you, it's gotten even worse. I thought about reporting him to the president, but seeing how happy the president was, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I hoped that someday, he would realize it himself. I didn't know that. My heart ached when I thought how the employees felt. The next morning, I apologized to all the employees at the morning assembly. I'm very sorry for the trouble my husband has caused you all. At the same time, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who have respected my father's and my feelings. Regarding my husband, we will take the appropriate measures soon. For now, I will do everything I can for this company, so please, help me. Everyone seemed surprised when I said that. The next day at the morning assembly, I was surprised. The products that we asked the client to wait a little longer the other day were prepared to be shipped at any time. Several employees had worked hard overnight after hearing my talk the previous day. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. I said, thanks to the efforts of all the employees, the company returned to normal business the next day. After everyone had left, I cleaned the office while waiting for Tyson, but he never showed up. Late that night, I received a call from the hospital. They told me that my father's condition had worsened and they asked me to come. My father looked like he was just sleeping peacefully, except that he was wearing an oxygen mask. Yet, all of the functions in his body were about to shut down. When the heart's function deteriorates, the human body is unable to distribute blood throughout the body and the area where the blood doesn't flow dies. The most crucial part is the brain. If the brain dies, it means the functions the brain controls in the body will also cease. I know that it's a bit late to realize, but the heart is truly remarkable. It's been working continuously since you were born. So, it's only right to say thank you to this heart. I stroked my father's chest as I spoke. But it's still too early, Dad. Something inside me snapped, and tears overflowed, blurring my vision. I didn't hold back, and cried openly. Tyson showed up, on the night of the visitation, sitting among the relatives, with an innocent expression. Where have you been all this time? I've been busy with a lot of things. He said it without a hint of remorse. The factory was in chaos. I've decided to help out from now on. In that moment, it seemed like all the color drained from Tyson's face. What the hell are you talking about? Yelling at me won't work. I have some questions about the accounting. Make some time for me after the funeral tomorrow. That night, Tyson didn't come home. I thought he had a good relationship with my father, but it was all fake. I couldn't rely on him anymore. The next morning, I headed to the funeral hall early. The funeral was scheduled for 1 p.m., but as the chief mourner, I had a lot to do. I had to make sure that preparation for the funeral was going well, read the condolence messages, and specify the placement of flower arrangements. I also had to greet the relatives who came to pay their respects. Tyson also came to the venue to help with the preparations. He can't afford to skip the funeral, can he? Five minutes before the funeral was set to begin, an announcement was made. We entered the hall and took our seats, but Tyson was nowhere to be found. Three more minutes. That's when Tyson called. I won't attend the funeral. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Something inside me snapped. You're not coming. I just think that it's a waste of time to be there only to pay respect. 
Goodbye. The funeral proceeded without him. He deceived my father, abandoned his work, and then skipped the funeral. He must think, I'm a pushover. He must think that, I'm in love with him, and I have no other choice but to rely on him, especially now that my father has passed away. In the past few days, I learned everything about the company. Tyson, I don't even have enough feelings in me to be angry with you anymore. I took out my phone and called the police. The next morning, I heard Tyson banging on the front door of the house, shouting. When I opened the door, he immediately started apologizing. I'm really sorry, please listen to me. Listen to what? Last night, I received a call from the police. I'm suspected of embezzling company funds. Did you report me? With Angelica's assistance, I checked the company's financial situation. In the process, we discovered that Tyson had a substantial amount of outstanding accounts receivable, and it was suspicious, so we investigated, and the embezzlement was discovered. Everything is already out in the open, so just give up. I thought something was strange, because you didn't want me to get involved in the factory business. Besides, you took my father's passbook from home, didn't you? Where have you been all this time, after you took it? I've been doing out-of-office sales. Oh, really? So your out-of-office sales is taking a woman that I don't know to a tourist attraction in the South? You used my father's car, didn't you? The dash cam recorded everything. No, it's not like that. I don't want to hear your excuses. We're getting a divorce. I'll have a lawyer contact you, so please wait for it. Goodbye. Saying that, I closed the door. Tyson stood there for a while, but eventually he gave up and left. After some time, the divorce was finalized. I consulted with a lawyer and successfully claimed alimony. He was also found guilty of embezzling company money. Although he was given a suspended sentence for embezzlement, he had to borrow money from a consumer finance company to pay off the embezzled money and the alimony for his affair, and he is being chased by scary people every day. By the way, the reason why he stopped coming to the company was because he was enjoying a vacation with his affair partner with the embezzled money. If he hadn't made a mistake with the delivery date back then, maybe the affair wouldn't have been exposed. Evil deeds don't go unpunished. Now, I wonder how he's going to live his life from here on. Well, it doesn't matter to me. I have succeeded my father and became the president. Angelica has returned to work to support me. The future is uncertain, but I am full of motivation right now. I'm very busy every day, but I am committed to creating a workplace where everyone can work with enthusiasm. The day begins with another morning meeting again today. Good morning, everyone!